12 minutes past eight, you are watching BBC Breakfast. Now, knife crime is a subject that continues to dominate the news. Just this weekend, six people were stabbed in London. In one incident, a 54-year-old shop worker lost his life. In a moment, we'll speak to Pastor Kevin, who's joined us in the studio this morning, who's a reformed gang leader, a gang leader and now on a mission to stop knife crime by working with young people. His efforts are the focus of a new BBC Three documentary called Escaping Gangs, Death, Jail or Redemption. Where's everything happening? Junior Eastside. is now looking for a way out of gang life. Jesus name. He has started coming to Kevin's weekday service in East London, which attracts hardcore gang members. You don't need it anymore. It's holding you down. You have to let it go. It is coming out in the name of Jesus. Despite his willingness to change, Junior is facing a battle to leave his past behind. Man once said to me, always be ready to meet your killer. And, <laughs> and to be honest, I'm always ready. So if that day ever comes, it comes, isn't it? You are the light in your family. You are the light in your kingdom. Well, good morning, Stuart. Pastor Kevin is with us. Uh, welcome to breakfast. Thank you very much for, for coming. And that's part of a, the, the church service called SPAC Nation, yeah. which many people may have heard about. I'm interested in, in your background. You're a former gang member. So at what age were you sort of involved in that? And, and tell us a bit about how you sort of came out the other side. Well, I got involved in gangs roughly about the age of um, 10, 11, where I used to just um, see what was going on in my area. And uh, I just started following from there and um, very young age, but um, I caught on to what was going on in the area very, very quickly. And then um, that shaped the rest of my life. So how long were you in the gang for then? So um, I came out of a gang basically at the age of 25. So and what was it that finally, I mean, what, tell us about the process and what did you finally think? I, I've got to make a change here or how did it happen? To be honest with you, I didn't think that I was going to make a change. Right. Um, I had to be put in a position where change was actually defined to me. And that only happened when I went to a church called Spark Nation. Um, I actually went there to cause a bit of trouble. Um, and having gone there, I heard Pastor Toby speaking um, and what he was speaking about was um, basically what I wanted. And I just perceived it. So do you think, I mean, because we talk about, as Louise said right at the introduction, we talk yeah. about uh, knife crime and, mm -hmm. and gang culture a lot on this programme. I think yeah. many people are aware of, of the sort of lives it's destroying, particularly um, young people in, in various parts of the country. Did you ever see a, another way out of it, or did you think that would be your, your life, if you like? T to be honest with you, I didn't see a way out of it. Um, and if I'm going to be really transparent, I didn't want to see a way out of it at that Mm. point of time because I was in that bubble, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. And nothing else out of that world existed. So the question for you, I suppose, is um, so you're now trying, you, so you're now in a very different position and you yeah. are trying to basically target young men who mm. were in a, who are in a similar position to the one you were in. Yes. So how do you make them or persuade them to sit up and listen to you? Well, um, I've, I've, I said this the other day, um, and um, something that my mentor at Spanish Nation tells me all the time. Um, if I'm going to, let's just use the analogy of an um, ex-alcoholic or right, an alcoholic, yeah. I'm not going to, um, if I'm not an alcoholic myself, I can't tell an alcoholic how to behave. And I can't tell him how to stop doing what he's doing and what he's going to affect if I'm not that person myself. Mm -hmm. Now, me being an ex-gang member, um, I think I'm in the best possible position to tell another gang member to stop and to follow me because I've been through it, I've done it, and look where it's got me. And do you think, um, are, you filling a, are you filling a gap that, that's not there anymore from either community centres or uh, whatever else could sort of rescue uh, the young men particularly that you deal with from yeah. the situation that they're in? I think Spec Nation is definitely filling in the gap um, because we are what's missing in the community. And to be honest with you, we are building that community back um, as it stands. Um, we're going to just have, we have another look at the clip of the documentary. Okay. And this is you sharing your experiences with a former gang member, Junior. Yeah. The surroundings of what was going on in my life just became a bit 
too much and I felt like I just needed... Well, guess what? When you came back, the surroundings stayed the same, stayed the same. so it doesn't, make, it doesn't make mean sense. anything. What you do is you come fellowship. Mm -hmm. You surround yourself with people that have been in problems. Do you understand? But it's all down to you. Yeah, yeah. So that's you speaking to, to Junior, who yes. is, is, as you were, I suppose, quite resistant to, to change. I'm interested to, I, I, we, we, we see in the documentary, I suppose, quite a lot of the, what makes good TV. But yeah. how much of it, I mean, is it is it faith? Are you teaching these these individuals? How much of it is sort of based on, on biblical teaching? Because it is a church, yeah, isn't it, Spectre yeah. Nation? Well, yeah, it's based on biblical teaching and it's based on um, real life now. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. um, from me going to Spat Nation, my life changed. So I can only sh show what I've been through. Mm. I can't show anything else, if that makes sense to you. Um, for some people that you, you talk to, and we, we see in the documentary, yeah. you know, you're trying to help them make a different decision, yeah. take a different path. It doesn't work. Mm. How do you feel about that? It's not that it doesn't work, it's that time. It's a race against time. Um, change is not something that comes um, straight away. Change is a process. Now. All I have to do is introduce, and that's what I think that we do very um, properly at Spark Nation is we, we, um, we are racing against time, but we're showing them that, listen, hey, there is a change that you could make mm. if you actually think about it, do you understand? So mm. it's not so much it not working, it's about the time that they process it and the time that they stop doing whatever they start to do. When you, when you hear, I we've talked about it again this morning, when you hear about another knife crime, another death from yeah. wh whatever that might be, gang-related culture, either yeah. in London or elsewhere in the UK. Yeah. How does that make you feel, bearing in mind where you once were and, yeah. and the position you now hold? To be honest with you, it gives me more of a drive to do what I do. And it might sound weird, but um, in order for me to want to move faster, um, obviously these things are happening you know, within drastic measures. and. Mm. Um, but when it ha when it does happen, it causes me, myself, and us as Spat Nation to even act faster and more and start doing <laughs> some crazy things. What do you mean by crazy things? Crazy things, me meaning um, stuff like takeovers. We do Nando's takeovers, um, Cream's takeovers for young kids. So we buy them um, free food. Um, so we do vast measures um, according to and, and speak to them there and yeah. try and address yeah. what they're going through yeah. and, and why they're carrying yes. all those sorts of issues. Exactly. Okay. Um, good to talk to you, Pastor thank Kevin. You thank much. you very much indeed. Um, if you want to see more on this, it's BBC Three's Escaping Gangs, Death, Jail or Redemption, and it is available to watch now on iPlayer. Yeah, really nice to speak to you. Thank you very thank much for coming in. Uh, Twenty past.